Live, we got a special guest in the house tonight, don't you. we, man? Yes, we do. I'm excited. I'm not even going to going to talk too much. I'm going to let this wonderful, beautiful, intelligent woman introduce herself and tell us why she's here and the movement that she's down with. Thank you very much. That's a great introduction. I make sure who she talking about. Make sure, <laughs> make sure that's me. But Go Go Radio. This is LaRuby May, and on April 28th, with your help, I'm going to be the next council member for Ward 8 in the District of Columbia. Woo! So, uh, right on. I appreciate that. that. Yes. Hey, shout out to shout that. Out shout out to Go Go Music, Go Go Radio. Trying. Yes. To shout out to Bam and everybody here. So I'm. I'm just very grateful for the opportunity to come and talk to y'all about the future of Ward 8. And, you know, you can vote tomorrow. We're so voting go tomorrow. tomorrow. Go out and vote. Go Malcolm X School, 1351 Alabama Avenue, Southeast, 8.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Let's vote for a better future for, for Ward 8. Because your right. vote counts. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Every vote counts. Every vote counts. Every vote counts. Okay, let's say you elected him. Okay. You elected him. What does Ward 8, and I know you work with the mayor, y'all are very, very close. Um, and I know, and I know y'all close, and y'all have a good, good future for DC. So, like, what is the goal that you and the mayor going to touch base on to the future for DC? So, you know, the mayor has to has to focus on the whole DC. I get to focus on nothing but Ward Eight, right? Right. right. So Ward Eight, man, we've been left out so long, man. It's, it's so many people, so many of our people struggling in Ward 8. So many of our kids not getting an opportunity to have good education. So many of our young brothers and sisters not employed. Um, we just have so many issues in Ward 8, but you know, one of the reasons I'm running is because we have so much potential. Right. So, so some of the things that we're going to work on, obviously going to work with the mayor on right. bringing some economic growth to our community, some restaurants, some coffee bars, a wine bar, you know, just just retail shops, right. grocery stores, some of the things that we need and we deserve in our community, but we also deserve some good schools for our kids, you know? Yeah, right. that's what's you all know? about. Alice Deal is a middle school up in Ward 3. It's like one of the number one middle schools in the whole DMV. It's a public school in, 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 in the district, but right. it ain't. it's not for our kids. Right? And so, but our kids deserve to have the same thing the kids uptown have. Our kids deserve to have that in Ward 8. And so exactly. I'm going to fight every day, you know, right. to make sure that we get, I mean, we got stuff like, man, Johnson Middle School up by Robinson Place right. up there. I they, went to Johnson. You went to Johnson. Shout out to Johnson. <laughs> right? But check it. Johnson doesn't have a fully funded librarian. Really? Right? No, no, no. So that don't make sense, right? Garfield Elementary School doesn't have a fully funded librarian. So when we think about reading, literacy, and language for our kids, how are we gonna do that without a fully funded library? So I, I, I intend to work with the mayor to look at the budget to make sure that we're just getting some basic, simple things for our people and for our future. So for those people, there are some people out there that say we shouldn't tear down Berry Farm, right? right? right. So I think some of those people that are saying that don't live in Berry Farm, right? 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 Mm -hmm. And so I've been in Berry Farm for years, and the conditions of that housing, our people don't deserve to live like that. It absolutely should be redeveloped. Now, the issue becomes is we can't displace our people. We can't toss them out and not give them an opportunity to come back, but they deserve to have a quality place. I'm gonna tell you, I used to work in Berry Farm, right? And I remember going into this sister's house, and we was looking for a little two-year-old girl. We searching through the apartment to find her, she had got stuck in a hole behind the bathtub because the holes in the walls were so big. Don't nobody's child deserve to live like that, mm -hmm. right? And we right. can't, as a council member, I'm not gonna let any of our children grow up in an environment like that. But I'm gonna also make sure that the individuals who live in Berry Farm right now have the opportunity to come back into a new, developed Berry Farm mm -hmm. so that, you know, they've been here in the bad times, right? When it wasn't so good, right. they deserve the opportunity to come back and be a part of when all of the revitalization happened in our community. So I think the best indicator about what somebody's going to do in the future is what they've done in the past, right? Because mm -hmm. it's a lot of people running for office, and a lot of them will tell you what they're going to do in the future. So what I like to talk about is tell people what I've been blessed to do in the past, right? So when we look at adults, there's a couple of things. I've been very blessed to be the, the founding chair of a school called Community College Preparatory Academy. It's the only adult charter school east of the Anacostia River. 
So adults can go there. If you not have the opportunity to have your to get your GED or to get a skills training or to get prepared for college, you can go there for free as long as you're a DC resident to begin to prepare you for the future. Right? I have a child development center. Right? One hundred percent of my teachers in my child development center go to college. You know how I know? Because I pay their tuition, I pay for their books, and I make it so that the professors come to the school to teach the classes because you're right there's a lot of our adults that our children are seeing that are are, are, are being bad models but we've got to be able to provide opportunities the other thing we got to do is there's a lot of our adults that are under resourced and are undereducated but they still deserve a chance to be able to take care of their families so we got to look to say you know what we got to train you so that you can get to a place to take care of yourself and your family and so we got to look to say, okay, I'm going to give you some paid training, right? And then I'm not just going to train you, but I'm going to pay you to train you, right? Pay you while you're being trained. But at the end of training, we're going to put you into a job, right? And a job, not just a job, but a career that leads to the middle class. I'm, I'm really excited. I have almost every union that's supporting me, right? I believe in the unions. I'm glad to have their support, but let me tell you about why I like the unions. It's about hard working everyday folk just like us, right? That's just going, we work in hotels, restaurants, you know, cleaning the streets, all different areas, right? But what happens when hard working folk in Ward 8, whether you have a lot of education or a little bit of education, you get an opportunity to work for the union, you get living wage, you get li living wages where you're making decent money, you get health insurance where 100% of it is paid by your employer, so you and your kids and your family get health care. We can stop using the hospital, the emergency room as our doctor, mm -hmm. right? And then you get retirement. My parents had seven kids. When my father stopped where he had retirement, he, he was a construction worker. He had a retirement. He had, when you know when my father stopped working? When he got too sick and then he died. Right? We got to be able to prepare the adults in our community. So, you know, you want to just chill and hang out sometime in the summer, but when you go and you work, put in your 20 years and you get, get a chance to retire, then you get to go and chill, but you're still getting some income. You're able to take care of yourself. So, but what we need is help for the future to prepare us for the future. And that's what we're going to do. Because the future, I'm telling you, the future is bright. Okay. Ward 8 is going to get developed. Lots of things are going to happen for Ward 8. That's not the question we got to ask ourselves. The question is, Who's going to be sitting at the table for you when this change comes? Who's going to be there fighting for you to make sure that when it comes, it don't push us out, but that it involves us, that it's with us, for us, and it's by us?